Hello, everyone. My name is Tyler Sherman. Uh, my beautiful bride, Rachel, and our wonderful children have been coming to PLC for a little over a year. I'm just absolutely honored for this opportunity to uh, share what the Lord's put on my heart during this fast series. And uh, the lesson or the message we will cover today is holiness. And I get a little more in depth to what the Lord has uh, placed on my heart about that and how we as followers. Um, can understand what holiness is really about. But before I get into that, of course, I'd like to just pray for all of us during this moment. And I'm really just welcome the Spirit to be present through this message and in our hearts during this time. So, Heavenly Father, I thank you, glorious God, for the wonderful God that you are. I thank you for the message and the word that you've given us, this guide, this beacon to what true holiness is. Father, I, I thank you for all of those listening um, to this message, those that are walking through the fast time, or maybe even just looking for some encouragement. Lord, I pray that you would use this message for your glory and your glory alone, um, as we learn a little bit deeper of what holiness truly is. Thank you for all your blessings and just the wonderful, amazing God that you are. And uh, all of this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Okay, so the topic given was holiness, but more than that, what is holiness? Um, we'll walk through a definition of that, but also are we holy and how do we become holy is the three-part breakdown um, for today. So first we'll start with what is holiness? So holiness, you must look at in two types. Um, first would be God's holiness and second, our holiness. Anything outside of this is uh, a step away from what the true definition of holiness is, and both are actually very different from each other. Obviously, God's holiness is this, this absolute perfection, this absent from even a trace of sin. Um, this picture of perfection is way beyond measure, and that is the holiness of our God. In uh, 1 Samuel, Hannah, the mother of Samuel, the prophet, uh, before dedicating Samuel to the Lord, has this beautiful prayer. She says in 1 Samuel 2, 2, she begins it with, There is none holy like our Lord, for there is none beside you. There is no rock like our God. She gives this beautiful image of the holiness that God truly is, this like none other. And the second part is our holiness. This looks quite a bit different. Um, this is a holiness that we are to be set apart from worldly ways. Obviously not perfect. We can never be perfect, but recognizably distinct. From the world, we should be seen as set apart. They should see us as different, a light on a hill, you know, um, not to be covered. And First uh, Peter two nine just describes this wonderfully when it says, "But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for His own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of Him." who called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Now, that's the image we should be, this chosen race. That is what our holiness looks like, set apart from the world. Um, for the second aspect of are we holy, we'll break down into a three-phase definition. And um, I'm going to introduce a word here, maybe new for some. Um, don't be intimidated by it. It's a simple word. It's sanctification. Uh, this is just a simple way of saying the action of making something holy or set apart. Um, as I continue through these, I'll use that word, but just remember, this is just simply the action of making something holy. So in understanding if we are holy, it's a three-part definition. First would be past or positional sanctification. Second is a present or progressive sanctification. Third would be a future or final sanctification, and I'll break those down a little bit more. Obviously, first, this past or positional sanctification is just a fancy $10 phrase. This means when we accepted Jesus into our lives, we also accept this one-time act of welcoming the Holy Spirit into our hearts and acknowledging our sinful state. I mean, it's truly that aspect of it. And uh, it's this beginning, this unchanging position before the Lord that begins the process of setting us apart. And that's that beginning of that sanctification, that action of making something set apart. Second um, Corinthians 5, 17 does a wonderful job of describing this as well. When Paul says to the Corinthians, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away and behold, the new has come. Second part, the present 
or progressive sanctification looks a little different as well. This is more the ongoing, the active, the continuous stage of holiness. Um, Because of our sin and flesh, we continually are called to grow in our relationship with the Lord and creating this daily spiritual renewal. And uh, as we expand on that, as we create daily, this is a progression. This is a progress, a process that it takes us to reach a better state of holiness. Obviously, it's ongoing and will continue through our entire life. Um, but Paul, again, in Romans 12, 2, explains this as, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. The final stage, your future final sanctification is this, this final stage for believers that occurs really when we die and we go on to be with Christ. Um, but because of no sin can exist in the presence of the Lord, we must be made clean and perfect to this point, whole point. That's body, soul, spirit. And in this final act, that's when we reach holiness on a level that can exist with God because of his perfectness and uh, his absence of sin. We cannot exist in human state because of our sin. So that's that final sanctification, that final holiness um, that's to come. Uh, Philippians 3, 20 through 21 explains it as, because our citizenship is in heaven and from it we await a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. So finally, how do we become holy? Well, I've uh, listed a three, three-way three process here, but we're not limited to that. There's many ways that we can expand upon this. But three ways that um, the Lord put on my heart is first, be filled with the Spirit. Um, this is a process of just welcoming the Spirit into your heart daily. And that's through prayer, through praise, through worship, through gratitude, through fellowship, through serving continuously. When serving others, it's, it's pretty hard not to be grateful. Um, Ephesians 5, 19, 21 gives this beautiful uh, picture of this as well. When um, Paul of the Ephesians says, Addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. That's uh, just giving our heart open for the Spirit daily to be a conduit for the Lord, to be an act for Jesus daily is how we begin our acts of being holy, becoming holy. A second would be to walk by the Spirit. With the Holy Spirit in our hearts, it does give us new life. With new life comes an influence over our lives as well. When we're walking by the Spirit, then it should impact our thoughts, our actions, and our desires. Paul, again, in Galatians 5, 16, 7, describes this as, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh, for the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. Um, right now, I'd like to give uh, an analogy I came across when doing research for this. And it's just this, it's great to give us a, a, an amazing picture of what this walking by the Spirit can kind of look like. And that analogy is in a dance. So in a man and a woman, um, in like uh, a salsa or a two-step or a square dance, you know, the man initiates the dance. In this case, you know, the woman, of course, follows. If the woman doesn't know the steps to the dance, it's impossible for her to keep in step. I kind of look at this as us walking in the Spirit. You know, the man, in this case God, uh, initiates the dance. In the case of the dance, it's walking in the Spirit. And the woman, of course, is us, and it's our job to follow. But if, if we don't know the steps of the Lord, it's quite impossible to follow what He calls us to. And by these steps, that's His Bible and the Word. And the spiritual word, the living word that he has given us are the steps that we are to follow. When we walk in this, then we can walk by the Spirit. He's already given us the dance steps. He's given us the moves. Now we just got to learn to walk in it. 
1 Corinthians 2, 12, 13 tells us that now we have received not the spirit of the word, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given to us by God. And we impart this in our words, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. Just brings back those, the scripture that's given to us. Those are the things that we have been given freely by God to understand. Now, the third step is to consume the living word of God daily. The word of God or the Bible is called living because it is continuously at work, either through prophecy, revelation, or simply at work in our hearts. When we consume God's word daily, we fill our hearts with life-giving power from God's word. It will teach us, correct us, train us. It gives us strength to walk in this very holiness. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17 tells us that all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Now, these three steps are the challenges for us during this time of fasting or in life moving forward. Um, I just, I pray that we will seek the Spirit, walk in the Spirit, and consume the amazing living Word of God into our hearts to sustain us and keep us on this path towards holiness. Thank you so much, everyone, for your time and uh, just listening to this message. And I'm going like, to take a moment to pray and uh, just really close out in the Lord. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this moment and this message. And thank you for this time that we've had to open our hearts to you. Lord, thank you for this clarification on holiness. Father, I thank you for the way that you are so holy. Father, I pray for each of us that we can grow even closer to you through this time of fasting, through this message of holiness, and through this season of life. Father, I pray that you would use these words, use this message in my heart and all those listening as we seek holiness, to be holy, to just grow in your word. Father, I pray that you'd use us as a beacon of light to those around us. May we be separate from the world as we go through this process of sanctification. Lord, I thank you for all that you are, all that you do. And it's for your amazing, matchless son, Jesus Christ, that I pray. Amen. Amen.